Hey guys, in this video, we're going to talk about the cell theory and what those three different rules are. And we're going to talk about how we can question the cell theory using atypical examples. So let's just get right into it. So for your exams, you have to know that there are three different rules about what a cell is and how it sort of behaves. Okay. Now, these three rules were discovered by loads of different scientists over time. Okay, you don't have to know what scientists or what exactly they did, but you just have to have an appreciation of the fact that it wasn't one person that came up with these, these rules of cell theory. It was kind of developed over loads of years, okay, after they first invented the microscope. Anyway, you then also have to know exactly what the cell theory rules are, as well as how you um, can apply them to different types of cells. Okay, so the first rule is that all cells come from pre existing cells. Okay, so they don't just pop up out of the blue or crystallize from existence, although they used to believe this. No, they all have to come from a pre existing cell. Okay, so one cell always turns into new cells, you never get some popping up on their own. Fine. The second rule of cell theory is then that um, cells are the smallest unit of life. Okay, so so if you if you break down living organisms into the very smallest parts, cells are the smallest unit. Okay, you can't get any smaller than than a cell itself, right? Which is why a virus, for example, doesn't count as a living organism because it's not actually composed of cells and it isn't a cell in itself. And then finally, this kind of leads on from the previous point is that all living organisms are composed of cells. Okay, so if anything is living, it must be made of cells to a certain extent. Okay, and so this was developed by loads of scientists over time, but you just have to be able to remember what these three cell theory rules are, they usually come up as one of the very first questions on paper one. So just be aware of those. You then also have to be aware that there are some certain types of cells that you can apply consider as exceptions um, that you can use to question the cell theory. Okay, so you have to be able to remember the three that we're just about to talk about, as well as why we consider them exceptions. So the first type of cell that we can consider an exception to cell theory, um, or that we can question the cell theory with is the striated muscle fiber. So that is essentially the muscle that makes up skeletal muscle. Okay, so if this is supposed to be a bone, um, and then I'm going to draw a bicep on top of that. Okay, so the, 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 the muscle that is attached to bones or that moves bones around, those are striated muscle fibers. Okay, and the reason why we consider these exceptions to cell theory or why they can, they can be considered challenges to cell theory is that these cells are incredibly long. Okay, so we usually think of cells as being these very small individual units, right? But, but striated muscle fibers, those are up to 300 millimeters long. So that's 30 centimeters. Now, if you consider the fact that we have to observe the very first cells using a microscope, you can imagine that this isn't really what we would expect, right? So that's why we consider that an exception or, or uh, we can use it to question the cell theory. Um, these cells are then also multinucleated. Okay, so that means that rather than just having one nucleus inside the cell, there are many different nuclei. Okay, and so those are the two different reasons why we can use it to challenge the cell theory. And you have to be able to remember those and recall those. The second type of cell that can be used to challenge cell theory is aseptic fungal hyphae. Okay, so fungi, in general, are normally composed of these strands or threads that we called hyphae. Okay, so if this is supposed to be a mushroom, not a very pretty one. Um, but you probably know that if you ever picked up a mushroom, you they kind of it's kind of composed of loads of strings or or loads of threads, right? And these are what we call hyphae. Okay, and normally these hyphae, if I draw out a bigger picture of these of this mushroom, okay, these hyphae are normally separated by divisions that we called septa. Okay, so those are like a septum that divides two things. But in the aseptate fungal hyphae, we have lost these divisions between the cells. Okay, so there's no divisions between the cells. And that's why we consider that an exception to cell theory or why we can use it to challenge the cell theory. And then finally, we have the giant algae. So the giant algae is a relatively large 
cell. Um, so it's, it's, it's quite large, but it's not composed of many smaller cells. So this challenges the idea that, that organisms have to be composed of loads of smaller cells, right? Because if we have one large cell in itself, well, then that can kind of be used to question that theory. Okay, so I know this might seem a little bit dry, but you just have to remember these three different names uh, of the exceptions, as well as a brief explanation of why each can be considered a challenge or an exception to cell theory. So the key points to take from this video is that there are those three different rules of cell theory and you just have to be able to recall them for, for paper one typically. Um, and you have to know that there are some cells that don't really follow these rules um, and you have to know examples of these. Okay, so that's it for the first part for the cell theory.